Greetings, HR professionals. I want to talk to you about auto provisioning elevated users in IPSA. And what's that? It means that IPSA will create elevated user accounts, HR Pro, HR Supervisor, Commander, Manager, for you before go live so that you don't have to do it. What happens if you don't? And that's a good question. Nothing. Except that all of the access requests will need to be submitted manually. Okay? If you're in a small command, that's probably going to be okay. But if you're in a battalion or higher, do you want to spend the first days of IPSA creating access requests? If you're a validator, do you want to be swamped with approving access requests on top of all of the other things that you have to do? I don't think so. Okay? Time is running out, folks. 11 calendar days. 11 calendar days. And here are some pretty alarming numbers. As of just a few days ago, there are only 369 active component personnel who will be auto-provisioned as provider group admins. There should be at least two per battalion and higher, okay? The brigade, the G1, the DHR. And I think if we add all those numbers up, it's just a few more than 369. If we don't have provider group admins, how are we gonna manage CRM? It starts at the battalion, okay? Worse. There are only 1,982 HR supervisors who are going to be auto-provisioned. I don't know what the right number is, but it has to be higher than 1982. I'm a firm believer that every HR NCO and above should be an HR supervisor in IPSA. And how many of those do we have in the Army? A lot more than 1,982. If there's no HR supervisors, who is going to add personnel to the S1 pools, upper echelon pools, and do that type of work? All right? There's only 645 assistant admins. Look, there is no rule of allocation, okay? You don't get only five of this and two of that, okay? Get your folks mapped into, into the training, get their DL complete, and give them the access. You can at least take it away after go live, all right? And if you, you can choose to do nothing, all right? And if you do choose to do nothing, I want you to think about this one thing first, all right? Imagine if every commander, first sergeant, training room clerk, platoon leader, platoon sergeant, submitted a request for Totmus, Emilpo, EDAS, and they did it all on USR Day, okay? It's not gonna happen. Too much other stuff going on, all right? And it's super easy to do. TRAs have created, or should have created, training rosters. All they gotta do is map, associate, assign, whatever word you wanna use, those users to that roster, and then enroll those people in the DL course in the ELM, all right? And the members have until the 31st to complete the training, all right? If your people have self-enrolled, that's fine. Just place them on that roster and associate them to that distance learning. And then during brownout and cutover or BOCO, IPSA, IPSA will migrate those rosters, the person on those rosters, and provision them as elevated users. And then, and then it's done, okay? The, the cutover teams will go in and make sure that they have the right row set class, all right? And then everybody will be ready to go on the go live day. Everybody will have their access. The, the training will determine what they can do, and the row set class on day, on day one will determine who they can do it for. And then on Go Live, all your folks have access, and your team won't spend precious hours submitting and tracking access requests for users, and they can start getting after it in IPSA, okay? Defend and serve.